Alright. So, um, uh, you guys, uh, we talked about Pratik Jain, Ajit. So, I would like all of you to open uh, Christopher Thomas' uh, dissertation. And um, just take a look. So this was Christopher's presentation, uh, you know, uh, dissertation. And take a look at um, is um, uh, you know introduction chapter. He talks about wisdom on the web, and he is this is writing a you know he started out his discussion with very philosophical take on it. I don't want to go into that. Now Christopher did um, work on a system called Examen. So he did uh, internship at HP Research Lab, and the Examen. Uh, uh, was um, a system where you select a bunch of keywords and give it to this, uh, you know, his tool, examiner. It will go to Wikipedia and generate a taxonomy right? uh, by exploiting the structure on Wikipedia and Infobox sort of things. And um, the quality of taxonomy that you could generate now, you see, you have a few keywords and what taxonomy, what taxonomy uses is structured representation, right? Um, a taxonomy that is uh, that encompasses all those keywords. You can use five keywords, ten keywords. So it automatically it, that's the form of knowledge graph if you think about it, right? Rooted in the knowledge in the Wikipedia, right? And um, that knowledge graph. Or uh, that taxonomy basically is uh, uh, something that you can then build upon, right? Um, and uh, the taxonomer, uh, uh, so HP went ahead and made a commercial product of taxonomer. Of course, those after the work he did, there was some engineering work that the employees at uh, HP did, and um, then we built the HPCO. Um, uh, do you guys remember HPC over? Oh, okay, now this, this is not. So then he created a system called Doozer, an application that aims at generating or extracting a domain model from Wikipedia or other similarly structured knowledge sources. It takes as an input an incomplete description of a domain, such as query or a list of seed concepts. And then um, it creates graph. Can we find a way to fix all these things? I contacted the staff. He hasn't responded. You have to do without him. Without him. Somebody needs to learn how to. Let me learn. So, like he built uh, here, Beatles songs and related concepts. So here is a query: Beatles, John Dylan, Paul McCartney, and songs. And then he creates a concept. So you see, he creates what he calls a domain model or concept graph. So, um, and there are a lot of examples, a lot of interesting things you can find here. Huh? 
Which one? This year. Which year? What time? 2012. 2010, 2012 is what? His visitor show is 2012. So this was a very decent and robust tool. Now we use this tool to populate uh, human performance and cognition ontology. And uh, let me show you uh, this slide a little bit. So here's an example, by the way, uh, this was a big success story. This slide uh, came with very little um, um, publication and uh, PhD in security. Somehow you convinced me that he's the right kind of guy I should hire. In two years, he became a semantic web guy. And he got tenure tech faculty position at UC, University of uh, Kentucky. That's a substantial win for somebody uh, who had, I don't think, had any chance of academic employment. So I've taken risk of this kind. Our customer were Air Force Research Lab. They wanted to us to create a ontology of today's knowledge graph or anything related to human performance, like pilot's performance. And um, if they are uh, subject to stress, how their performance decreases or changes, those kind of concepts. So, so we're talking about creating the knowledge base. So this is the definition of ontology. But consensual knowledge is very important, which is also called ontological commitment, if you will call something an ontology. So <clears throat> there are some ontologies in life science when we did this work, well-known gene ontology, that only as part of an easy relationship. And NCBO, which had 15 million terms and about 200 ontologies, uh, well, in the database that uh, was created in the National Center for Biomedical Ontologies. So in biology, a lot of, bio, in life science, a lot of ontologies were used, all this by hand. So you will see these terms here. So carve a focus domain hierarchy out of Wikipedia. This is what we use user for. Extract mentions of entities and relationships in the relevant scientific literature to support non-hierarchical guidance. So um, our customer gave a keywords or you know uh, a few phrases to identify uh, journal articles in PubMed that are of interest. To them, that were part, you know, that that would have scientific knowledge or literature on the human purpose of population. Map extended entity mentions to concepts and extended predicates to relationship to create knowledge base. So you had the domain model created by loser, the thing, and then you extract triples or name entities and relationships and hang it on the skeleton that was created by this. Right? So loser, this hierarchy from Wikipedia. Then there was a um, big NIH project in neuroscience that they had developed an ontology by hand. We integrated them. Then we got an animal 
uh, NLM, they have developed rule-based biomedical knowledge repository, triples. And we develop our own NLP technique for parsing base NLP triple for they get NLP triples. So this gave us initial knowledge base, and then we ended the knowledge base with this additional thing, did some curation, and that became final knowledge base. So this is how it looked like. Hierarchy using Wikipedia categories and graph structure. Then triple extension. So there are some details. Huh? This one here? Yeah. So parsing has been used. Parsing what? Parsing. Oh. Has been used. Yeah. The, our extraction was based on that. I mean, you should ask the question what will change now, today, if you have to do this? Remember, within a matter of two, three months, we created a, a pretty useful knowledge graph of 2 million entities and 3 million relationships. Um, how would you create that? One problem is that you it's very hard to exactly argue the quality of it, other than human doing spot checks and look at it. So number of entities, Two million number of non-trivial facts, three million. So example of NLB based thing was calcium binding protein S100 B modulus long term synaptic plasticity. That's an example of the knowledge using this technique. Pattern based olfactory bulb has physical part of anatomical structure mitral cell. I'm sorry? Yeah, well, so these were uh, scientists uh -huh. at NLM writing rules, linguistic oh. rules. Okay, so, so, so I'm just trying to understand my question. So, first, uh, what is NLP based? So, why don't you have the same example using pattern based so that they can compare? They did not. You, you. They did not uh, give us the same kind of things. And also, um, this was done on a corpus that was created by using the keywords that our customers say defined the the domain of interest. So these were papers from journals that dealt with the topic they had on hand. This was. 86 million such facts created using the rules that, and, and it's called BKR, Biomedical Knowledge Repository, that linguistic rule that people wrote by hand, rules, on entire problem, filtered out to limit to the concepts of interest for this domain. Now my second question, that's why I'll so why this time 2010 just open up the data? So this LD already came out in 2003, which is now 45 percent now. So which become very successful in the IR 2003 data. So did the you know if you were asked this time, so did you compare LD and so latent direct reviews? Uh I don't remember you asked that question at that point. So uh so my but but at Noesis, where we had this, we uh, talked about LDA quite a bit. Oh. And I had uh, developed opinion, um, and my students did also, that LDA is too low quality for our use. So it is perfectly fine for clustering and um, IR centric work. Yes. Because it, yeah, most of the services are But it is not good for 
higher quality tax extraction that is necessary for you. So um, actually, LDA came up quite a bit. Uh, I now remember. But uh, I would always argue that I succeeded. The results, see, the objective of LDA, I think problem that I saw were different. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, this one, uh, the way that you're extracting the pattern is uh, bootstrap by the Yeah, we would like to uh, limit to those um, initial hierarchy we generated. And as I said, we create that image in a trellis. And then we'll hang these peoples connecting what you already catch. Yeah, see that setting? So this was the full architecture of the system. The outcome of that was used by Schooner. Has everybody seen Schooner? Remember, right? So Schooner did trailblazing. If you're not seen Schooner, please do. That's a video. And um, we took the knowledge graph and indexed all the 18 million or 20 million cognitive abstract we had at that time. All of them. And then provided the semantic browsing, which is a schooner. So you can browse from one document to another document following particular relationship of your interest. So user is deciding what trail, uh, going back to whenever Bush. What trail, uh, you know, uh, is of your, you know, uh, the specific, you know, connections of the ideas you want to have in your trail, right? Human has a reason to think about Chaturangi and then you in the context of students at the yeah, institute. Um, there may be other relationship, but you know, very uh, not relevant. Maybe that oh, they come from. And joining countries, right? So <clears throat> this was the schooner. I'm very proud of that. Sometimes we do uh, very exciting research, uh, and uh, somehow you know, from an academic perspective, they don't become very successful or, or or such. So we do have a paper on that, but um, I think not enough uh, value of that was realized by people how powerful that is. But even today. Uh, these thing concepts are very relevant if you want to give a tool to a pharma industry or to healthcare industry to allow the scientist working at the pharma company to use his knowledge to do the trail blazing because they're looking things at in context they want you to control the context in which they want to see the connection but the part of the information comes from different sources different documents. So you see a root of um, this idea is one in a way influenced the Roy Cameron's work as I will describe to later on. He worked on undiscovered public knowledge. There was a guy at uh, University of Illinois. He uh, made 11 discoveries, meaning very valuable knowledge that was not known. It's called public discovery. Public discovery because it was all open literature, but nobody had stitched together meaningful things. So it's called intelligible discovery. And he found the fish oil and Reynolds disease connection as an example. Reynolds disease. That was not known until he took this knowledge from this paper, this from this paper, connected together meaningfully. Join the Exactly. Right? He did have to have his own personal knowledge. Then this connection makes sense. Then he hypothesized, then people experimented and proved it. There's one very um, uh, proud moment for my group, uh, for my uh, team, that is the work uh, we did uh, in um, Redos project. 
where from our analysis of social media, we postulate, we found, we discovered that people were using lopramide. Lopramide is moody medi, the diarrhea medicine. Whose uh, prescribed dose is 2 mg. They were taking in 10 to 20 times the prescribed dose to manage the withdrawal side effect from using opioid. See? The drug abusers are very innovative. They are so hooked to this. You know, this is the situation, right? They, they, have, they find innovative method to get high. They crush the thing, inject it, snort it, all these different things they know. And then the combinations, they combine the drugs to get high faster or slower or longer lasting. They do all these experiments. And then, then when they deal with the problem, uh, you know, this terrible hangover, they find things like this. So they found a over the counter medication, immunity. For managing the virus syndrome from buprenorphine, we found that we published it in 2013. Three toxicology studies followed, starting our paper in 2016. Three years after we published, FDA came out the warning of this misuse of imodimidine, and hence making it harder to get imodimidine over the counter. So it is not abused. It was a great success. It was indeed a great success. So, on, on this core public knowledge, uh, in this, in one case from literature, the other case from social media, right? So, Schooner knowledge based browsing relations window inverse relationship creating trails, persistent projects. So, workbench. So, all this one scientist works and finds this part. Can share with other scientists and say, can you validate this? Can you look at it? Right? So the scientific discovery, you know, takes a lot of expertise. One person may find a potential drug target by going through this kind of literature and databases. And other scientists may say, okay, what is the toxicologic profile of these things? Drugs, or drug molecules, which are a potential you know, drugs future are often uh, uh, okay, uh, often fail because a they are very bad for humans. <laughs> they do bad things. They may kill the disease. They may work for the disease, but they do so many other bad things. And other thing is called metabolic profile. They are not absorbed in the body in the appropriate way. So that is why they fail. These are the two most important reasons why. So they have to look at all these different perspectives uh, uh, before. Or taking a drug diet before say, saying to management, will I, you know, we propose we do a clinical trial. For phase one study on animal, you can uh, take risk. For phase two, you have to have all these other things done and be sure that this is unlikely to affect humans adversely. So there are other practical things also. So, this is what scientists found. The ability to browse predications together with documents will likely reduce the cognitive load required or for encountering interesting facts, both for novice users and domain experts. And being able to keep track of multiple articles in a really nice tool to have, and it cuts down the time between jumping back and forth between articles. So those are the kind of problems we solve. And then we had various other things that we were looking at. Provenance and other metadata, very important to have those things also. New knowledge example. VIP peptide increases in cattle, catacolamine biosynthesis. Now, I want you to uh, understand something interesting. The knowledge <coughs> is not as simplistic as most of us computer science think out, think about. We may find this, but 
it, this is only in cattle, not everywhere. It, only known in cattle. We don't know this uh, this in other, you know, non cattle. This is a knowledge that is more complicated than just a simple triple. Catecholamine induce beta adrenergic receptor activity in rats. These receptors are involved in fear conditioning in humans. And result, VIP peptide affects fear conditioning. Which is by the way, human, human performance and cognition. What chemicals could introduce fear in a pilot or biochemicals? That's the kind of thing that they want to do. That's the research. Mm. Is there any major improvement from the taking chapter in that book? Is there if not a simple straight for the triple Yes, yes. Yes, so this is exactly the thesis of Wynn Newell. Okay. So I'll hopefully you'll come to that if, if we get to that. But she developed contextual knowledge base. And the context could one one facet of context was provenance, but there were others. So again, it was a very influential topic, a hard topic. Uh, by the way, uh, you know there is a potential internship available with uh, work in working with Win. Most likely, that internship can be remote. But uh, you can ask Tilini and uh, Joey. Both have worked with her, and. Um, the pros and cons of working, but for a list of students, there's there's plenty of pros. I would say. Huh? It will be basically large language one, not this. So I mean, that was time that you know. Now she works more on large language ones with with healthcare applications. Medical, biomedical. So, the this is another interesting thing. The provenance needs to be domain specific. It needs to have a domain specific element. So, it's a very com com complex idea. I discussed that Satya's work was primarily on provenance, right? For knowledge based quality, those prominence aspects are very critical. I won't go into that, it's a pretty deep subject. Better ranking of sex and triples, simulating integration of multiple, there are you know, famous OB ontology total, seven foundry ontologies, gene ontology, protein, they also relevant to something you'll be working on. Linked open drug data. Mental inheritance, so and so forth. So, and there were multiple tools that were used in this project. Okay, so that is, uh, I think with that, uh, that's enough of the high level information on. Uh, uh, Christopher Thomas. Now here is uh, Corey Hansen. And Corey did very influential work, in my view. One of the most exciting work, one of the most joy I had in doing core scientific research was with Corey. Um, Cory uh, was a, a student in uh, community science bachelor's. He happened to take my computer science course. My course, some people would like, uh, some people would hate. Uh, he happened to like a lot, and he decided to be my student. He had a loan, so he worked with me as an employee for a year. He had to put programming skills when, when he was a psychology student. And in a year, he uh, paid his loan and he became a PhD student. Corey, um, let's look at um, uh, 
this may not work. The stupid guy said right state just kill all the databases. They would have gotten so much citations and all that. Actually, I know what to do. Do you see semantic perception here? Huh? The was a uh, semantic cognitive and uh, perceptual computer. No, that is separate. That's my vision paper that you guys are going to discuss. Uh, so you're trying to find the generation, right? Yeah, but there is a paper that will be easier to. Okay, this might work. So converting sense as an abstraction, let me see. I'm looking for unit PDF, right? I found the PDF. So this is my very good friend, uh, K.K. Prasad. We did a lot of work together. Uh, and you can see his talk is on, you know. So what I want to discuss, people are good at making sense of sensory inputs. What can we learn from cognitive models of perception? And fundamentally, what we did is that you have an observation and uh, you seek an explanation and you create a, a hypothesis. Say, I got a um, reading of high temperature. Hmm? I shared the link of that paper in No, so so this is the one that you guys are going to discuss. I don't want to discuss that. What is the link from the paper? I, I don't want to discuss it. This is something you're going to present. And as a group, and there's a lot more about it. And I'm going to expect you to go deep into this uh, topic and really understand it. I need you to do original research there. There's a lot more to learn there. Now go to the chat yeah. again. Huh? Yeah. Okay. This one?
So one of the things Cory did um, was um, so I'm going to try to diverse rather than here. Is that there was a meeting uh, somewhere in at MIT, and I was the worldwide web member of the worldwide web consortium, and um, I had the idea of uh, so I had published the paper of semantic sensor web. You see that is one of our highly cited paper. It's co-authored by Kori and uh, Satya, uh, but you know, I think we saw that last time. But then my idea was to take sensory data and make it meaningful. So we, we talked about textual data, FT and uplifting, and you know, doing entity linking in the concept your space and the benefit that has. But the same thing applies to any data, including sensory data. Except the sensor data, the advantage is even bigger. You're getting a number. You have to say what is the unit of that number, and whether it's a good value or bad value, a lot of things. And then you say what it means. So you say, uh, suppose your um, blood pressure instrument gives you a number of 145. Say, oh, that's, uh, then you say systolic. Uh, you connect the other for a systolic blood pressure. Then you know systolic blood pressure 145 is hypertension stage two or whatever. Right? You get a lot more understanding, right? 145 doesn't say anything, right? That fundamental thing of having a uh, object, an observation, having a meaning by connecting it with the uh, sensor information, <coughs> also with, the, with the knowledge graph ontology, was the core innovation that I wanted to have. And we were able to make this into um, the semantic sensor networking uh, standard. From the first, we made it um, what you call as a the factor standard and an IS. Did not have value to work with, you know, this whole time consuming process before he was with it. Uh, there's one paper from there that is my third most cited paper with, you know, a whole group of people who worked on it. So a lot of names, but original idea came from, you know, I think I, I, I'll take the uh, credit for that. It's exactly the same idea, by the way, uh, for visual as it became as a visual. Right? It's the same idea uh, at heart. You have something, um, and you know, it is a web service component or sensor company, you know, and you connect to ontology and make it meaningful. And then you know, with that, there are a lot of other things you build. How do you exploit the surrounding concepts in a knowledge space and ontology and such? But um, what is more, uh, that was more applied in a way. But this was the more interesting part, semantic perception. And that short paper that I have with, um, uh, I did the practical side and I suggested this and quit the theory and you know, all the uh, you know details that it takes to do it. So, I'm looking for one particular figure. Cory is another one who writes very, very well. If you see, so he developed this, you know, he, he adapted this perception cycle, your quality, your observation process, you get percept, your perception process, you focus, meaning get more details, give more details and you, uh, well, uh, develop and validate perceptual theory. How do you know this is an object and what that object is? That is the cognitive uh, model that um, uh, cognitive scientists have developed. Uh, the particular name that comes to our mind is Nasir. He is, he is a cognitive scientist who has done very influential work. Now, um, <clears throat> what he did was to 
So there are a lot of mechanics here. And he developed a <coughs> an ontology called Intelligo, which made it easier to convert the observation into perception and validate. So <coughs> from observation to hypothesis is an abduct uh, is an abductive cycle. Abductive reasoning and from <coughs> hypothesis to um, you know uh, back is the deductive cycle asking for more information. <coughs> Let me put something in my yeah, just pause it. The campaign. What happened? You forgot all the time. <laughs> the startup also um, um, created um, a campaign where in Bangalore, rickshaw guys will charge more than the meter. So reporting on all that things and, and get, you know, newspaper coverage and, uh, you know, the, uh, so anyway, so the guy, I really like him for that. He was consultant to EZDI for early parts right. of part earlier. He was CTU, at that time he was CTU at Groupon. Yeah, so he went to Groupon, he worked for Netflix. When he was at Netflix, Netflix moved from his own data center to Amazon Web Sites. That was a big job, big job. And he was, you know, so very, very response, you know, he he worked on one of the most um, neat ideas that I, I'm really proud of, which again did not uh, get fully realized. So the idea was the following that, um, you know, uh, on the web, you have link, HLAN. What is the link? You take a piece of text and say connect uh, hypertext reference link that goes to another page. Only semantics you have is the words for which you have to which you have connected this set, right? So you have connected there was keyword or a text uh, thing that tells you about what this link may be about. I say let's write a software agent that would Traverse the uh, target page, analyze the page, give me metadata, and associate the metadata with HREF. Later on, I named that MREF, metadata reference link. So instead of HREF as a physical link, I said, let that be RDF, let the metadata be in RDF. That will have made a very powerful semantic web. Our first paper was published in 1996. Second paper was published in 1998. First paper did not use RDF because RDF itself got defined in 1998, and the same year we published the paper on MRA. This concept, if you think about it and compare with the semantic web concept that he modestly mentioned. Not even defined. He just said uh, in his 99 group that what if you associate metadata with web pages? And that's what he calls semantic. Then in 2001, they wrote that paper in May, and you should look at that paper and compare with my pattern. We are far ahead and we are correct, and they were practically wrong. They wanted to use description logic. They wanted to feed software agent. Nobody has succeeded in writing meaningful software agents using out. It's not that. The, the whole vision of semantic is not that. But our vision of semantic web, where we had RDF and ontology world model and semantic search. Semantic browsing, semantic personalization, semantic investment. That's that. Right? Anyway, so um, that is an idea 
that I thought was a tremendous possibility. Unfortunately, I could, you know, we not we did not realize that vision in a practical sense because um, it would have taken. I would have to succeed working with the World Bank consortium or uh, companies to add the features to the web infrastructure to make this possible. And in 1996 and 98, people hardly understood or think they thought about metadata. Everybody who was working on web were either manual developing, manually developing taxonomy and ontologies like Yahudi, or they did TFI, TFIDF based search, which is what Excite and Ultra study, or they did TFIDF based search with the added um, thing of page rank. Initially, Google was that, it was all TFIDF plus page rank. The reason Google could technically build uh, beat, um, these other two guys, the other source bigger search engine than Google, yeah. sorry, was because those guys remember at TFIDF and this guy came with this um, using the social knowledge or uh, page rank. Then Google went towards machine learning. Then the 15 year paper shows you know how they went to uh, in 2012 13 the use of knowledge there. Right. So, um, so this is the paper that I talked about. That we are running out of time. We have to go for that. Okay. All right. Then we'll stop here. Man, you cut out, cut me out. Most of my game is cut out. What are you doing? Stop now. Well, uh, the next three class.